And uh, to kickstart the session, it, the first session is sponsored by one of our partners, Minja. And I'd like to invite my colleague, Rajas Karandakar, to the stage. Rajas is a senior territory manager for, for ASEAN at Amazon Web Services. Thanks, Chris. Welcome back, folks. Um, hope you had a very interesting keynote. Um, lots of new insights and lots of learnings. Uh, my name is Rajas Karandikar. I'm a senior territory manager at Amazon Web Services. I work with startups, SMEs, and enterprises in Singapore. I started in Amazon about four years ago, a uh, little more than four years ago, in the web services division. And when I started uh, working with customers, most of the conversations, or many conversations I had with customers were around what is cloud computing? What is Amazon Web Services? Can you explain the business model? How does pricing work? And during the four years that I've been here, the platform itself has matured quite a lot, as you heard in the keynote. The conversation we have with customers has also changed. Customers today want to find out more about how do we migrate to the cloud? So rather than what is the cloud, the conversation is about how do we get onto the cloud? And what's more is, when customers start adopting AWS, when customers start using the cloud, they want the same level of service, the same assurance to the business to get the benefits that the cloud assures them. So customers are now asking us, how do we deliver uh, business benefits to our end consumers? IT departments are asking us, how do I maintain high reliability and uptime? And in today's session, our partners, Minja, are going to talk about how to deliver business assurance and value to customers and to IT teams on the cloud. So I'm very happy to welcome on stage Anind Sen Gupta from Minjar. Minjar are premier consulting partners of AWS, and we've done projects with them around the world and here in Singapore. And Anindo will take care of this session. Thanks a lot, Rajas. And good morning, everyone. Uh, really excited to be here and uh, just to see the crowd here uh, talking about what we can do for you on the AWS cloud. I, I actually want to kind of spend the time, we have the next 25 minutes with you where uh, we, we had an excellent keynote. We talked about the fact that cloud is real and, and we see a, a lot of customers we speak to are, are really in the post the adoption space uh, going to mainstream. And this is where what we wanted to share with you is how we've helped some of our customers in our last five to six years journey of being a born in the cloud company in, in really helping them deliver the business value that cloud actually delivers, as well as committing to the service assurance that businesses expect and demand from technology as they go forward in the journey. Before I start, a quick uh, note on Minger. Uh, Minger actually started off working, uh, it's a born in the cloud company uh, with AWS way back in 2008 and nine. Today, we, we are a premier consulting partner who has done over 1,000 projects, and we've had a, a great amount of experience in helping our customers working with AWS teams in, in, in their cloud journey. We, we are a team of technology fanatics who, who really love what we do. And, and what's really important and what we've really enjoyed in our journey so far is the fact that we, we really help our customers change their game and, and, and really move and innovate. And wh why is this really important for us? And why is it really important for you? Uh, it, it really boils down to the fact that today, I, I think all of us who are here are, are part of an incredible era in, in what technology can do for business. And it's it really about the fact that what we've seen consistently in the last three to five years is earlier when technology or our IT was supposed to help business, it was really around efficiency. It was really around cost. But today, we, we see businesses demand a lot more from IT. And, and I'm sure each one of you in your roles today, you, you could be a business leader, you could actually be an IT executive, or you could be some of the developers who are helping build the technology, are, are really part of the exciting story of helping build digital businesses. But, but there are actually a lot of aspirations that the businesses have, and, and that's something that we need to deliver uh, in, in making sure that those commitments are met. But clearly, I think the, the, the initial great adopters have already shown us the way. What we're seeing is the fact that technology is really disrupting industries. And not just this slide and a few of the key uh, messages here, but it was exciting to see the keynote today morning. And then we had the CEOs talking about what Globe's doing or what Singapore was doing. And then it's really exciting that every industry, the leaders are thinking of how to innovate and survive. And it's really important for us because that's what is the clear trend that we see again and again. When it comes to survival, 
nothing better than really talking about one of the basic tenets of actually evolution. And, and what we're seeing is uh, a recurrence of some of the basic principles of evolution uh, incurring in the industrial era that we are in. And it's not new for us. The industrial evolution hit us all almost 250 years ago, and then we saw a huge amount of innovation which was driven by steam engine and electricity. But today, we are entering the information age and where we, we're really looking at a phase where we actually have to adapt and innovate to survive because the winners in the information age will be different from the winners in the industrial age. And this is where it's really important for us as technology professionals to see how do we help our businesses change the game. The businesses today really demand a lot from technology, and that's what excites us. And then when we look at what we've done with our customers and what we've been able to do working on the AWS platform, we see three key areas of focus for us. Uh, the first one, absolutely, agility. Businesses demand to be agile. Businesses are innovating faster. They have to iterate. And for that, they really need to be uh, working on an agile platform. But at the same time, when you are talking about innovations and products, they're about aspects that you actually convey to your customer. And then what you promise is not just functionality, it's also about performance. And that's where technology has to really deliver on performance that will help assure customers a seamless experience. And last but not the least, while you plan for functionality and performance, it has to work like clockwork. And then we really believe that all your innovations on cloud has to really be supported by zero defect operations where what happens on, on the ground for your customers is, is without any issues at all. In, in today's discussion, that I'll spend some time in how we, we really helped our customers across these three focus areas. But before that, I, I just want to reiterate one point. To be able to do all these three things together, what's more important is the fact that we accept that cloud is a platform that can enable us to do that. Uh, Stephen in the keynote talked about the fact that it's a new normal, and we strongly support that view because what we see is to be able to deliver these promises to the businesses, what you need is a platform that's agile, that's reinventing itself every time. 516 innovations in one year and more to come this year is, is something that really assures you that you can keep exceeding customer expectations, business expectations. So moving on to the first part of, of what uh, some of the experience we've had uh, around agility, and I think this is one topic we all very well understand, and I'll not kind of spend time to reiterate the importance of the business value of agility. What, what we'll talk about is what we've helped some of our customers do that. Uh, uh, today, in the keynote, uh, Marcello talked about how important the transformation to become an e-commerce platform was uh, for the company. And, and this is where we're excited to be a part of that journey as their infrastructure partners. Uh, the e-commerce technology team built an outstanding platform that really helps Singapore Post to actually launch exciting new brands, which are global brands in the Southeast Asian market. And while the business teams focus on really setting up the, the distribution, logistics, the marketing, and the customer support, uh, they have a partner, and we've been working with the technology teams over the last two, three years to really make uh, a robust uh, e-commerce platform backbone, managed infrastructure where it allows them to commit a, a very fast launch to market for their customers. And what it also means is they can actually scale and then share these platforms with multiple customers and, again, with a team which is located in Singapore, manage a pretty large portfolio of geographic locations. And, and we, we work with the technology team and really ensure that we commit to a, a fast turnaround time in building new platforms and supporting it as we move along. I'll move on to the next customer, and, and this is one of the largest Sri Lankan conglomerate that we worked with. And then again, here, it was a use case of doing something fast to deliver value to business. Um, this, this customer is, is working in multiple industries, and we focused on their retail segment, where they really wanted to get fast insights around what are the areas where they can really improve customer loyalty and addition. And this needed us to look at data from different sources, their, their internal IT platforms, from social uh, uh, public uh, data, as well as uh, some campaigns that are run. And, and the ability for us to really come together, build a big data solution, and then host it on AWS, and from, from start to pilot launch, and then testing it just took us six weeks. What it shows is the fact that we're able to 
help our customers in, in, in their agile and then fast requirements of helping drive value to business again and again. And then this is something where the speed and cost of innovation and experimentation is small. Uh, the, the last uh, point, uh, and one of the case studies for this section, is really around what, some of the work we've been doing with Samsung uh, for the last uh, two, three years. Again, uh, I'm sure some of you here are, are customers of uh, the Samsung Galaxy Life uh, loyalty and the customer retention program that they have. Uh, an exciting app which really promotes uh, a lot of events, uh, promotes a lot of opportunities for you to really kind of look at the good life and then aspects that you can enjoy. But on the back end, I just really want to talk about what, what was the whole goal and philosophy when we started working with the mobile apps team from Samsung. And it is really about creating a platform for experimentation. Um, it's, it's really being able to deliver fast to ever-changing needs of our customers and really kind of make them feel part of, of a larger story. And, and what the AWS platform allowed was a, a agile platform where the different teams could work together uh, while being secure and while being compliant to the overall Samsung needs and, and, and generate and, and create new experiments that can be uh, used for different themes. And what has really helped is, uh, in terms of a backbone, uh, a very strong framework where what we have is multiple development teams working closely with the major operations teams. And we've seen almost uh, at peak times, uh, we today have about more than 15 applications in the portfolio, up to 50 releases per week. And that's only possible when we design for scale, when we design for standardization, and we're able to deliver that for our customers. Uh, with that, I'll move into the next uh, part of our section. Uh, and when we are actually allowing business agility and innovation, what is most important for us to really make sure that while our development teams are focusing on the functionality, they're focusing on what's right for business from a functionality perspective, we from the, the partner perspective are really focused on how do you add guarantees and performance. And then this is really important because finally, it's about the service that you want to deliver to the end customer is a mix of both functionality and performance. Uh, one of the best things that we have been working with, and then, uh, we are part of a lot of AWS architecture workshops. We, we work with the architecture team in AWS, as well as conduct some of the workshops that we do for our clients, is, is the focus on designing for cloud and design best practices. And one of the best things that I like about the, the way the whole design framework is built in AWS is it's really around guaranteed performance. Uh, the other big and very important aspect for us is the fact that a lot of us who have been working on the traditional IT and, and really have been very focused around making sure we follow some best practices like ITIL and ITSM is, is something we see uh, the concept of service design and the concept of actually delivering service warranty ties in so well with design principles of cloud. And, and if you see the aspects like security, capacity, continuity and availability are something that are based in the fundamentals of design that each one of us in AWS ecosystem will talk about when we try to build the applications. And, and that's something which not only is about the right design practice, but end of day delivers performance to your end customers. So I'll talk through a few of our case studies experiences of how we've helped our customers achieve their performance goals. This example is for one of the Intuit uh, parent companies, unique product for the emerging markets. It started off a few years back with a focus on India, and it's really growing from an uh, emerging market perspective, but it had a very simple mission. There are over 700 million people in India itself who have a phone but don't have data access. It's about bringing internet to people who can operate with SMSs. And I think, as you would realize, that's, that's a goal that is really re uh, resounding overall in the emerging market scenario, where you can actually SMS a request and then this platform will give you a search answer. Um, and then this has very unique use cases. And uh, from, a, from a platform perspective, what we had to design for was, was uh, completely unexpected scale uh, scenarios. So I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with cricket. It's, it's a sport that India is crazy about. And, and what it means is when we have a cricket match which goes on for about an eight-hour period in a day, there are people who are curious to know what's happening, and they want to know the scores. And that's when we've seen this, the requests of demands shoot up 100x the normal in a single day. 
And, and that's the kind of scale that we're talking about. And when we have to design an architect for scale, it's really important for us to, to make sure we have a platform that is designed for these bursty events. Uh, not only is it from a performance perspective important, what's really important for us is to realize that you have to plan for cost in a traditional world where if you have to plan for 100 scale, your, your cost planning and capacity planning will go out of whack. But here, by, by using amazing concepts like auto scaling, we are really able to even match the cost aligned to what the requirement of, of the platform is. And that's a big benefit for our customers. The next example that we have is, is really something which is, is pretty close to us. We, we work for a client of ours, which is one of the largest uh, security ISV vendor in the world, and, and they were actually putting their uh, security product on the AWS marketplace. Now, consider a security firm needing to put in their uh, application on the marketplace. It absolutely has to be secure. And, and this is where Minjur came in, worked with the engineering team, and then really ensured that we not only take care of the actual application security, we looked at OS hardening, we looked at database hardening, we looked at threat management from an external perspective. And, and what we have is not only a, 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 a really secure uh, Amazon machine image, but a process where this is something that is continuously updated and, and kept on the marketplace. So, the, the whole expectation of customers of leveraging this product meets the security standards that the company sets for itself. The, the, the last uh, case study in our section for design for performance is uh, a reality firm in, in, in India uh, called Common Floor. Uh, just to set a context again, uh, today in India we have uh, less than 50% of the population which are in the cities. And over the next 20 years, India is going to be urbanized at a pace which is not seen in history, and, and we, we have started sort of being urbanized for about 70% of the time frame. Now, this is a significant shift that's happening, and what we're seeing is an interesting uh, fight among some of the top few real estate portals to kind of grab the market around how you can help movers who move to the urban world find a place to live in. And, and we've worked with Common Floor for, again, the last few years, where it started small uh, with a small overall instance. And one of the unique things about this platform, while I talked about scale in an earlier example, is, is really about uh, the need for performance. We're talking about uh, a content management platform where each web page, where an image like this that you see here is, is uh, about half a megabyte of size. And when we actually have, at one point in time, uh, up to 60,000 users accessing the website in a minute, you're, you're talking about a need for a scale and architecture uh, which is able to continuously to deliver the page load performance in spite of the number of users coming in. And then we were able to design an architect, again, using the best practices of uh, a loosely coupled architecture where we were able to make sure that the overall performance and page loads were not impacted when the scale uh, happened for the uh, customers where different uh, key campaign seasons and the like. And uh, this is where uh, it's important to continuously be looking at architectures. Uh, we all talk about starting small and growing. And what we've been able to do using a platform as agile and reinventive like AWS is really kind of morph and change the architecture to need the, suit the needs of our customers as and when they need that. I'll, I'll move on to the last section, and then last but not the least. Uh, our, our years of experience working with customers and moving them to cloud and actually helping them manage their operations cloud, uh, we built a very strong practice where we realized that in the cloud world, managing operations is not the same as managing IT in the traditional world. Uh, this is really different because, one, we, we have uh, a lot of variables that we see in the cloud. And, and we, it's almost impossible for uh, our, our team members to have track of multiple things that are going on at the same time, period of time. The other piece is absolutely about the fact that what you get from AWS is, is a impressive infrastructure as a service, managed service offering. So you're not actually focusing on worrying about putting together the routing, switching, the storage, the compute, but really on higher level services that are helping in delivering the performance and, and the agility we talked about. In, in, in such a world where we are talking about cloud operations, uh, Minja has created a, a, its framework where we are very clear that the operations to be delivered for cloud has to be software-defined. This is where what we look at it is the fact that 
on, on a day-to-day basis, the, the aspects around cloud operations is way uh, higher in terms of customer expectations than traditional IT. We are, we're talking about governance and compliance. Um, we all have to be very clear that cloud gives us an ability to use, consume on demand, but that means governing costs is really important. Uh, there, there are ways and means where AWS makes it easier for us to use cheaper resources. I mean, we had 48 price reductions in, in the last two, three years. And then when you have these kind of events happening, how do you continuously optimize your cost? You have excellent plans that come out where like, you have reserve instances and others where AWS allows you to save on cost. But that really means somebody has to be governing and optimizing costs on a daily basis. The other aspect which is so critical for all of us is security. We, we, we all realize that security is important, and it's a shared responsibility where uh, the platform does part of it, but when it comes to application security, data security, the network security, and, and the overall encryption and user security, those are uh, aspects that we have to work with our customers to ensure they're robust. And then that needs uh, a layer of governance and compliance as well. The other aspect is, uh, in terms of analytics and automation, Trying to do everything manually will really not give us the agility and the performance that we're really looking for. And if the businesses demand that, you actually have to orchestrate and operate in a way where some of those aspects of design are run through automation in your operations. And then again, that needs a way to work on, which is different. And last but not the least, you re really want to give improved visibility because we, you might have complex architectures, you might have uh, multiple accounts that you're working with. You might have hundreds of instances of resources that you're working on. How do you ensure you get overall visibility and assurance of what's going on in your environment? Uh, one of the things that I'd like to introduce is uh, to help our customers with these goals, uh, uh, we have uh, from Minja a product called Botmetric, and it really helps us meet our vision of software-defined operations. And it really helps us in, in delivering some significant cloud insights. It, it, it really helps us in cost optimization, and it also sets up a platform for setting up automation, which, which can be used to meet the goals of our software-defined operations. What I'll do is I'll actually cover uh, in the next uh, few slides are some of the case studies of our customers where we've leveraged our automation focus in, in delivering the service assurance that they expect. The, the, the customer we're talking about here is, uh, uh, is a startup from the Silicon Valley, and um, it, it really is in the business of actually uh, offering marketing automation for their customers. It is a SaaS-based platform, and again, uh, it's a very small core agile team that's working on growing this uh, product in, in their marketplaces. When, when they came to Minger, they, they really wanted uh, a way to really drive governance and compliance around their operations. And uh, what, one of the best use cases that I saw was within a day of actually implementing our, our, our solution, they were able to identify cost-saving opportunities of 15%. And then this is really where the value of such capability comes in, because you're able to analyze what's happening in your accounts without having to really kind of go through each resource and analyzing that, and then coming up with clear recommendation of what you do to reduce cost. But it's not just about cost. Uh, we are going through multiple security incidents and an impact for security and risk. And, and we are able to identify some of the open risks that are in the environment by, by using our technology and helping assure our customers that they need to make sure their IAM controls are stronger, they, they need to look at ways it's architected and then point to vulnerabilities on the public or the private side. And, and this is something which is of immense value uh, to anybody who is responsible for cloud assurance. And, and BlueShift is an example. And one of the things that we learned from that experience experience was the fact that it, it really allows them to define a framework of operations which is driven by risk and compliance, and then we've over a period of time been able to actually work with them in other operational aspects. The, the second uh, slide, again, we'll, we'll refer to uh, our, our work with Samsung here. And uh, I, I mentioned earlier the fact that it was a great, it is still a great platform for experimentation where we work with multiple development teams and ensure they're able to move their changes and codes faster. Uh, at some point in time in our journey, we realized that we, we actually had to do better in automation. And, and this is where we actually leverage some of the third-party tools, which helps in continuous integration and delivery, and then integrate them with 
services like Elastic Beanstalk and AWS. And today, what we've happened is really two key improvements. One, uh, the overall defect rate post the build release to production has gone down significantly. And then this is where it's not just about the defect reduction. We all realize how much the developer time is important, and we're able to reduce their time of effort in solving issues and focusing on developing new things for the customer. At the same time, it, it also has, over a period of time, uh, improved the, the overall time spent or reduce the time spent by DevOps teams, and then they're able to focus on higher value added tasks in terms of architecture, governance, and compliance. And then this is really where how we see uh, our customers value the automation that we bring into their platform. The, the last key study uh, that we would like to talk about is, uh, again, a, a, a Silicon Valley startup. And, and while it's in a startup, it's in a, uh, it's in a space of regulatory compliance. Uh, OpenQ really helps you manage your risks when you're operating in different social channels. Today, we are all in a social world where you work and engage with your customers in multiple social channels. And this is where a platform like OpenQ helps you, from a corporate perspective, track and be compliant to some of your commitments uh, from a regulation perspective, while allowing and then use of multiple social channels. Uh, this is where, given the fact that it is uh, uh, in a space of high regulation, they wanted even their overall architecture and compliance to be pretty strong. Uh, what it needed was, how do we ensure that their RPR2 targets are met by, by setting up automation around backup? How do we ensure that the DR is automated and we make sure that we assure our customers uh, of a robust DR solution? Uh, how do we ensure that the INT and access management policies are in line with their policies that they have committed from a security perspective? And uh, these are uh, checks and compliance that we govern on a daily basis. We're able to set the policies, track them on a daily basis, and enforce and comply to whatever the client expectations are in terms of meeting the commitments of business. So uh, this is where I really want to kind of summarize. Uh, I'm going to quickly talk about what we discussed today. Uh, we, we really believe as a team that cloud is the new normal where we, we are excited to help our clients work on their solutions and the journey on cloud using a powerful platform like AWS. We, this is where we really believe that the need for the businesses is about agility, but at the same time, it's also about performance and zero to fit operations. Uh, as you start focusing on building and architecting solutions and running them in cloud, I hope this uh, session really helped you in focusing on areas which you think are important for us and how a partner like Minjuran can help. Uh, with, with that, uh, I'd like to thank you for your time. We are there at the booth outside. Uh, it'll be great to speak uh, to each one of you, whoever has time, talk about our experiences and how you can help us. And it's been fantastic to be here. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, thanks. thank you very much, Anindo. Uh, that's a great presentation by Minjar. Uh, as, as Anindo said, Minjar is one of our partners, and they have a booth in the exhibition area out there. So do take time to go and speak to them, speak to uh, the other exhibitors, speak to the AWS solution architects.